Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and I'm here with Nancy Grace. And today we have a very interesting topic to discuss today by Sheikh Ahmed Didet. Why Muslim women should wear hijab. Wow, that's going to be great. So uh, if today happens to be the first time of you checking out my channel, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my Facebook and Instagram. And if you have any Islamic video you want me to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, before we get down to the video, I'm actually a theologian and I make this video not to discredit anyone's religion or to discredit any scholar. This is just for educational purposes. It's about us getting to understand other people's um, religion, to understand why they believe in what they believe and also their way of life. So guys, without much ado, let's get down to the video. Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know, Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover her, shave off her head. Your Bible says that. <laughs> the woman, the woman who bathes her hair says, shave them off. Shave it off. That's what the Bible says. And you woman, the, your Bible says she must not be allowed to open her mouth in the church. But that's your churches, they don't believe all that. And your people don't believe in that. So you are inviting trouble. You know, because of this, in America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street. And people just walk by, looking the fun. Say, so or maybe they're enjoying themselves. Woman is being raped. No, no. I said, you are inviting it. Look, this modesty. The nuns, the nuns. You know, the nuns. Roman Catholic Church. Nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast, that's a Scarborough and all that, with bikinis and tangas and G-strings. Look. Sure. <laughs> It's attracting look, even an old man like me, I tell you, my God. <laughs> if, if I went there, I tell you, I'll be burning inside. <laughs> I'm telling you, look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. The thing that allures man more than anything on earthly existence is woman. Do you know that? I don't know. Him. The Quran says. The Quran says, "Zuyna lil nasi hubu shahwati min nisa." Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, min nisa, women. Well, banin. Then son. You know, I got eleven sons. I can make my own football team. You know how? how the, you know, it makes me feel proud. I got eleven sons. You know, my own football team, my own cricket team. Mm -hmm. Well, banin. And number three, well, qanatir al mukantarat min al zahbi wal fidda, and hoarded heaps of gold and silver, and wealthy land, and horses branded for excellence, and all this. This is the list that is given in the Quran. Number one, women. The Quran says, the thing that allures man most on this earthly existence is women. And I'm telling my Western friends that I don't have to prove that to you. I don't have to convince you. I said, you see, in my country, in the city of Durban, city of Durban, I think we'll end with this. We'll end with this. Okay? We'll end with this. In the city of Durban, there is a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. You know, lorry, lorry, trucks. You call them trucks here too? Trucks. We call them trucks. And on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. Then G North, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. I'm asking these Westerners, I say, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second-hand truck or with a tractor? Except the man. You see, the woman is being diagnosed with the Edwards. And BMW, I don't know you have BMWs here. 
It's a motor car. It's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes Benz. I'm not in the market for it. You see, I started with the Volkswagen Beetle. I did 120,000 miles and I had to change for another Beetle and another Beetle and another Beetle. Then they stopped making the Beetle. You know the Volkswagen Beetle. They started the Golf. So I had to buy Golf number one, Golf number two. I'm still not in the market for a BMW. But I am forced to read this advert. In my newspaper, I see a BMW motor car. And with a woman in the skimpy, skimpiest of bikini, what you call the tanga, you know the G-string. She, <laughs> she's standing in front of the motor car and it's, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. I'm asking, I'm asking, the woman of the car, the woman is buying the car, and her is underlined, test drive her now. I said, look, this is what you're leading yourself to. This is, the Westerner, he sells his mother, his wife, his daughter, his wife is a star, and she's been mangled on the screen, simulating rape, and they, they enjoy it. You, you enjoy your wife being simulated. It's not real rape. But you know, it's simulated, you can see everything about it. She's being raped, your mother, your wife, your daughter. And you enjoy, your wife is a star. So, sick, sick. No, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God, we haven't come to that sickness yet, we Muslims. We try, we try to keep away from it. This is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you. But we say, you are playing with fire, my child, and you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. Okay, that's a very interesting um, one. Sheikh Hav says a lot, and of course, uh, we are open to learning. This is one of the basic um, reasons why I started up, you understand, reacting to some of these um, Islamic scholars is because I wanted to also understand other people's um, religion. Even though the way Sheikh started, I may not fully agree with him because he says that, Paul says that women should shift off their head and then women are not also allowed to what to speak in the church now we have to go back and look at the reasons to what make paul said so you know during that time in you know, a current paul realized that in the church the way the women would leave their hair and all those things it was actually there to distract the men in during their time like when you look at innocent women that have the head that's when you have this sexual desire and all that yes so paul got to realize that look this thing is really distracting men so why don't you cover your hair or if you don't want to cover it then why don't you just shave it up you know that is an advice so i know that paul says so and i know that it's actually in the bible but that does not mean or that form the basic doctrine that you have to do so because paul said so then we have to it's about what god said See. that is what is very important even though we know that yes for sense of decency it's very good that when people look at you they should be able to identify you and tell who you are you know they always says that, that even in an organization they said the first impression kind of it matters right when people look at you for the first time what they see or how you present yourself is how they're going to address you you know but then like he rightly say it's not always in that aspect who was also right it's not for the sake of um advertisement or because you want to promote your business and then you allowed your daughter or your wife or whatever sister to go and simulate herself and all that you understand naked in the process no that is not you understand a good teachings either to islam or to christianity it has been expected that a word a woman should cover her body just cover your body you know that's why I, I kind of feel like in this aspect I felt like the Muslim have really or should I say Islam have done very well or should I say the Muslims per se they have really tried their best by raising their women well let me put it that way Christian brothers you should not or Christian sisters you should not be hard on me for making this statement because mostly when you go to when you just go to a market square or maybe just go outside now and then you look at the men the females they both from both religion for both the christians and you see the muslim they will cover themselves they wear the hijab they do all those things 
But when you look at the Christian sisters, of course, they will just expose themselves and all those things. And some of the examples that Sheikh was even talking about, I can tell you that 99% of those ones doing the simulation and those advertisements are Christians. They are actually from Christian's background. Go and check, you will see, 99% of them. But all the same. All these things in a sense happen, but then we don't have to what, encourage it because doing so, there are some men who have this sex drive, high sex drive, right? And since they have a very high sex drive, when they look at a woman exposing herself like that, some of them could not control it. And then you see them in a sense going on to rape her. I am not saying that women are the causes of rape, but I am saying that exposing their body contributes to it. Because had it been that the woman in a sense cover herself, maybe that man could have not in a sense think in that direction or to even think of having a sexual intercourse with her. But because of what he saw and because of men are moved by what they see, and then that makes him in a sense to desire her inside. Now, when you look at it in a sense to the Bible, what did the Bible say? The Bible says that he that look a woman in a sense lustfully have already in a sense left with her. So you see, because of your action, now cause somebody what to sin. And one thing interesting thing about Christianity is, it's not about until you go and physically have intercourse with the person. It's about you just looking at the woman and desire her in your mind. It's being recorded that what you have committed sin. Why? Because you have looking look at her word lustfully. So you don't have to be a woman and be a tool that will be used on the same for destruction. Because because of that man have desired you, have slept with you, even though not physically, of course, is going to deny him from gaining paradise. That's according to Christian belief. And you, who happens to be the tool that makes that brother to fall into that temptation and to sin by what desiring it in his mind by conceiving it you too in a sense you also will face judgment so why do we have to use ourselves in a sense as tool of destruction it's expected that word we should just cover ourselves irrespective of the religion you believe in i thank god that the christians or the islam also see it in a sense in that direction you need not to what to open yourself, just cover yourself. That is your glory as a woman. At least that can be able to like help you understand to at least save us from certain things in a sense happening, you understand, here on earth. So that we can just have a peaceful, you understand, world. Alright, so guys, this is the end of our video. If you like our reaction, you should like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any video you want us to react to, don't forget to drop it at the comment section and we're gonna check it out. So guys, amen. Amen. bless.